Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. I'm in a little bit of a bind, so this is going to be a real quick video. This is about a flat position butt joint, square groove weld, 11 gauge, 125 thousandths thick. It's a common joint in every school curriculum that teaches TIG welding. And so I'm going to show you a few tips today on how to, how to pass this thing. All right, the first tip is cleaning the metal. And uh, what I mean by that is use a clean file on the edges. Most times they're sheared edges and they've got trash in them. You want to file it really good. When you think it's filed enough, file it some more. Then use a clean stainless steel wire brush, uh, preferably a power brush. Get that oxide film off of there and then wipe it with acetone. Then we're going to tack the ends. Now this joint I didn't clean very well today. Like I said, I was in a little bit of a little bit of a pinch, a little bit of a hurry. What you want to do when you tack, light up, let that cleaning action work before you puddle and then gradually puddle before you add much heat at all. Get them joined so that the heat conducts from one piece to another and you don't peel it in back. And then just add a little drop here and there and keep adding drops and add a little extra. You want a little extra button on there to give you something to uh, a landing pad and a launch pad. Don't use a gap and then add a, a little extra filler metal when you tack those ends. And here we're going to tack the other end. Again, we're going to sneak up on it a little bit and let that cleaning action of that AC current etch that aluminum oxide where it's nice and shiny. You want to shi if you don't get shiny, you're screwing up somewhere or another. You want a nice shiny puddle. That means you're shielding with argon perfectly and you, uh, you've got enough cleaning action set on your arc. The next thing is we want to tweak this thing. We want to bend it about 5 degrees. We didn't use a gap. But we also want to tweak it and get about a five degree bend in it so that it gets it up off the table and also provides a little bit of rigidity so that it won't dive on you. If, you. if it dives and tweaks the other way, it's really hard to penetrate. So we want to bend it a little bit, about five degrees. See, it's just up off the table. That way when it draws shut, it'll draw up instead of down. And then when you start welding, you want to let that heat soak a little bit. Now I stopped purposely after this far to show a restart on it and what we're going to do on a, either on when you're starting the joint from the beginning tack or when you're stopping and starting aluminum is so conductive it loses its heat even though it gets saturated with heat quickly it also loses its heat so when you're stopping and starting let that heat soak for a few seconds before you take off and then you'll make a, a nice uh, tie-in where you'll hardly be able to tell so you see I'm letting it letting that cleaning action work a little bit and then gradually ramping up the foot pedal backing up a little bit about a ripple or two let it heat letting the heat soak a little bit and then moving on into the crater and then right where I left off I'm gonna move ahead and then start just like I always welded and I do this little step and pause motion I find it very helpful and that's tip number five use a close arc length to penetrate and then while you're pausing and adding filler you can lengthen the arc length that really helps it gets that uh, electrode out of the way and then moves that tip in there to really penetrate and sink the, the, uh, sink the weld in there and then you're pulling back while you're uh, building up and adding some reinforcement. It works for me anyway. You see how the heat just saturated really really hot by the time I got to the end of that weld there and that's the, that's the last tip. You gotta back off that amperage just about as soon as that puddle melts into that tack and that's why we put a little bit extra metal on that tack to give you an extra half a second to react instead of just melting it away and blowing it away. You see where that tie-in was? You can hardly tell. I mean, it's a fully penetrated joint. Ain't nothing to write home about. Um, if you've ever tried welding around a camera, you'll understand where I'm coming from here. However, once again, let me show you the shot. Good tight arc length when you're moving ahead, and then you pause back up and add filler and try to watch that puddle, watch it sink and then watch it build back up and then you'll know you're penetrating and you'll know you're adding enough reinforcement. Before Tip number seven is before you try the aluminum butt and waste all that metal, you might as well get to where you can run a decent bead first and you do the aluminum drill to do that. And what I mean by the aluminum drill, I did this video a long time ago where you just get a scrap piece of metal, doesn't matter if it's flat, square tubing, whatever, and just run tons of beads, stacking them next to each other and getting good at running a bead. There's no point in trying a butt joint until you can run a decent bead and the way to learn how to run a decent bead is just run a bunch of them 
on some scrap metal like that and try different things, try different arc lengths and try different amperages and all that. And also, you know how hot that gets when you're welding bead after bead after bead? So that's where the TIG finger comes in, in handy. And uh, buy one or don't, either, you know, it doesn't matter to me, but I, uh, trust me, it'll help you. All right, that's it for this week. I'm off. WeldingTipsAndTricks.com.